This is my big bike, and this is my new small bike. You might be thinking these look about the same, and if anything, this one has bigger wheels. Well, I'll explain that. But when mountain bikers refer to big and small, they're not talking about the physical dimensions of the bike, they're talking about the travel. This is an enduro bike with 165 millimeters of travel and 170 up front, and this is a cross-country bike with 115 millimeters of travel and 120 millimeters up front. We're gonna talk about why that matters today because uh, we're gonna be hucking them off of big drops. Well, it's actually a big drop with a step up after it. That's what enduro bikes are made for. Enduro bikes are big because they're made for doing big things. All things considered, this drop is actually really smooth. Almost everything at Kohler Bike Park is really smooth. You just kind of plop into the transition, but if you don't clear it or you overshoot it, well, I recommend you don't try that on a small bike. Let's try that on a small bike. Drop in. Big drop, small bike. It's a visceral experience to say the least, but all things considered, it was actually pretty awesome. This thing really takes off on jumps. A stiffer bike allows you to boost a lot easier. The landing was interesting, and if you came up short or overshot it, I don't know, you probably start to run out of options with 115 millimeters of travel. But one kind of big open secret is that Cross-country bikes are awesome for jumping on, with a big asterisk. You see, cross-country bikes are not actually designed for all this. They're designed to pedal efficiently. They're designed to get you up hills, across traverses. They're made to be the most efficient human-powered mountain bikes possible, while enduro bikes are skewed more towards going downhill. That's why enduro bikes have tons of travel, and it's why they're long and slack. They're meant to be stable going fast in a straight line, so you don't go over the handlebars and get broke off. On the other hand, cross-country bikes are actually designed to keep you positioned over the handlebars so you can lay down more power while you're climbing. They're lighter weight, they have a shorter wheelbase, they have a steeper head tube angle. They're meant to be nimble and twitchy and maneuverable at moderate speeds. Actually sounds like something I would hate. But here's the thing, this is not really a pure cross-country bike. It's got wide handlebars, a slightly heavier frame, definitely on the upper end of travel for cross-country bikes, and it has a dropper post. The front tire's a little knobbier than what you would normally find on a cross-country bike, and of course I have flat pedals on it. This is a cross-country bike wearing flannel. That might have been said before. And so why is it awesome for jumping? Well, that's where it gets interesting. From a geometry standpoint, cross-country bikes actually have more in common with dirt jump bikes than you might think. They're short, they have steep head tube angles, they have high bottom brackets. They're meant to be maneuverable, and in the air, you can really throw this thing around. Off of a lip, because of the short travel, it just takes off. Whoa! Just don't make any mistakes. A lot of people call this style of bike a down country bike or a short travel trail bike, but this is really not. It's, it's more cross country than those things, but it's set up a little bit differently. I have a higher stack. I have really wide bars. Like I said, I have a dropper post and flat pedals. And so it actually can do everything you would do on an enduro bike. Just don't go into any rock gardens at 40 miles an hour. But why? Why not just use an enduro bike? Well. Let's take this bike to where it's actually designed for. On 
On normal single track, short travel bikes are just more fun, period, especially when you're going low to moderate speeds because they're more responsive. You don't have to go a million miles an hour to have fun. You see a route, just pull up and the bike shoots up in the air. You need to get more speed, just lay down on the pedals and it takes off like a rocket ship. On the other hand, enduro bikes are kind of a handful until you get them up to insane speeds. And there's a reason for that. Enduro bikes are long, and if you're familiar with Einstein's theory of special relativity, you know about length contraction. As you get to a significant fraction of the speed of light, objects will actually shorten up. And so engineers make enduro bikes longer to compensate for this fact. Well, actually, that's only true from the observer's point of view, but it is true that the faster you go, the closer up things seem to be. If there's a big, long 30-foot double, when you're going mock chicken, it doesn't really seem all that big. And so enduro bikes are bigger, and they don't feel that big once you get them up to speed. Cross-country bikes and down-country bikes, they just perform better when you're riding at non-relativistic speeds. And so, I feel a little conflicted about this bike because all the reasons I like it, all the things I just mentioned, are why I love hardtails so much. And I have quite a few hardtails. I don't know when I'm gonna ride any of them now that I have this. I suspect I still will. But this definitely makes choosing a bike in the morning a little bit more difficult. Now to reiterate, this is not set up like a cross country race bike. The seat would be up your butt, the bars would be narrower, probably have the stack a little bit lower. It would not be something you wanna hit big jumps on. But set up like this, it's very capable of doing just about anything I do on my enduro bike, except maybe not at as high as speeds. And in fact, I'm going slower when I hit big jumps on this. I'm able to get more distance out of the same speed because it has less travel. It's not moving around as much. You're able to transfer energy into the trail a lot easier. And so it's true that I needed a new mountain bike like I need a hole in my head, but here it is. And I really like it. I'm probably gonna be riding this mostly for a good bit until I get to something that I'm gonna mess up on. If you haven't noticed, I'm in Bentonville right now, I'm making the same videos I would have made at home, only I'm making them here, and I have Visit Bentonville to thank. They made this trip possible, and so thank you. I hope you enjoyed just me talking about my new bike today. I hope you learned something about geometry and cross-country bikes and down country bikes, whatever you want to call them. And if you didn't learn anything, I hope you found this video entertaining. Thanks for riding with me today, and I'll see you next time. Okay, whew, that thing's scary.